Welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show. It was at Marvel Stadium last night. This was a must-win match for the North Melbourne Football Club in particular against the Adelaide Crows, uh, who also needed to do that, just to square the ledger a little bit, but it worked out beautifully for the Roos. The game started off quite slowly. The second half got going. Ben Brown was spoken about kick four. Eddie Betts kicked three all in the first half. Higgins was terrific again. Polak, I thought it was his best game for the club. Goldstein dominated the ruck, and the Crouch brothers tried pretty hard, but... Uh, a man sitting next to me got him started. Kick two goals, Jack Zebel. Uh, welcome to the Sunday Footy Show, mate. Um, when you kick so many points as you did in that first, I think at one stage you're one goal ten, almost game over. But uh, you're able to come back. Yeah, I think at half time, I think we went in. It might have been um, two goals in margin. Adelaide were in front, but I thought we dominated the game pretty much for the first half. And it can be deflating, I suppose. But I think we knew um, over the last couple of weeks we'd put together patches of good footy. Um, Understanding coming into this week, we really wanted to put together a four-quarter effort and the scoreboard wasn't going to change it at half-time. So we knew that what we are doing was working um, and creating the shots is a hard thing in AFL footy. Um, should be the easy part of kicking goals, but uh, we obviously stuffed it up a little bit on the weekend. So um, it was good that we had that four-quarter effort and we could really capitalise on that in the third quarter. The week before against Hawthorne started well and it looked like Ben Brown or bust against Hawthorne. Last night you had Mason Wood who didn't kick a goal but presented really well. Just another option. Yourself up four was quite good. And Kane Turner has showed little patches where he could mark the ball above his head as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously Brownie was challenged during the week externally. Um, we've, we understand his importance for our footy team and I thought his response was, was outstanding. Mm -hmm. uh, kicking four goals but the support Mason Wood provided down there as well uh, coming in from the VFL. He was outstanding. Um, Kane Turner is underestimated, as you said, in the air for a small bloke. Um, and I think Jai Simpkin had his best game for yeah. you as well as a half forward, um, getting up the ground and getting back and challenging their defence. There's a better balance side, I reckon, yesterday, and certainly with Ben Brown up uh, up forward there with Mason Wood and things like that. What about he's so important to you, Big Benny? You just need him up and going like this and taking marks, and he, it does a bit of rough work too. Do you talk to me about that run up, or is that just he's always had that since he's come to the club? No, he has had that uh, down to a fine art since he's come to the club. It took him a while to to get that sorted, but obviously we're pretty confident in his goalkeeping ability, um, and it stands up in mm. big big moments, which Bloody is great. Yeah. Um, there was another moment involving Ben Brown and uh, Brendan Goddard. It was on ABC Radio, I think, and he was outraged mm. by it. He said yeah. it was outrageous by this particular incident, the flop. Uh, what are you reading about? To be honest, mate, oh, that's the first time I've seen it since yeah. the game. But oh, I didn't, didn't see it? No, I didn't see it. I was probably right there. But, um, <laughs> oh, mate, I think that's a free kick, to be honest. No, no staging? No, not at all. Right. Brownie's off the ground. When he goes, he doesn't jump backwards. Look at that. So um, everyone's entitled to their opinion. But at the end of the day, the umpires have got to make the decision. Oh, Brian didn't have a do. great <laughs> night. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Lotto. Busy in the trade period, of course. And Nath spoke about Polak. He's been strong, must be said, through the first four rounds. Pittard really good yesterday as well. But how have you seen the three? in particular, Hall, Pittard mm. and, and Pollock? I mean, they all they all bring something different to our team that we've probably lacked over the last couple of years. And um, I think everyone knows all his strengths and, and he's playing to them at the moment, which is great. Um, but I'll tell you who's really surprised me is Jasper down back, to be honest. Uh, I think two or three years ago, he was actually in the All-Australian squad mm. um, as a halfback flanker. And, and I think he's really back to that form. Uh, injuries have let him down the last couple of years, but he's so strong. Like, you look at that contest there. Like, it's an outrageous haircut, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he's from Brunswick and he lives in Brunswick, so it probably suits him to a T, but he's one of the nicest guys, Jasper. And um, Polly's elite ball use out of the yeah. centre like that. Um, as a forward, you can't ask much more than that. Jack, we heard that Melbourne had a circle of truth last Sunday or something where the players were pretty open and honest with each other. Yeah, you know, Round one was a poor game by North Melbourne, getting belted by Fremantle. But as captain, and what do you do through a week? You know, I know there was changes at selection, a few changes of roles, but how heavy does it get you know, when you start a season zero and three? It does. Um, yeah. There is no bigger critics than ourselves yeah. in the footy club. I mean, the footy world, when you turn zero and three, um, a few years ago we went zero and five, everyone sort of comes after you a bit. But I think inside the four walls of the footy club, we are our biggest critics. Mm. And, and what we dished up over the first three weeks wasn't what we wanted. Um, and we were working really hard to try and turn that around. Uh, we believe that in the last sort of two weeks against Hawthorne and Brisbane, we put together parts of mm. games um, and we knew that, that our game plan will stack up. So believing in the game plan, um, backing it in and, and just giving that four quarter consistent effort was the way to go. Mm. And um, obviously when you win compared to when you lose, you, your reviews are a little bit differently. Um, and we had to address a few things in the team reviews, which which all of our boys understand that's, that's for the betterment of the team. So um, I think that Last week we had a really good training week on the track and, and it set ourselves up to execute on last night, mm. Saturday night. Are there things like, we you know, talk about the circle of truth at Melbourne and that type of thing, there was a, a, a 
terrific moment through the week at Harden Street when Majak Door mm. ran out onto the yes. track. Those sort of things. Does that also provide a lift for the boys? It does. I mean, um, seeing Madge go through what he's been through um, and, and to see where he's at now in his recovery, um, it sort of makes you forget about footy, in all honesty, for a little bit. Uh, I think he ran on the ground for the first time on Monday and we were zero on three and for that 20 minutes everyone forgot about footy mm -hmm. and it was just awesome to see one of our mates back doing what he loves. Um, puts a bit of perspective into it as well and um, I think his story is, is one part but I think for us as a footy club um, there's a lot going on in everyone's footy club throughout the year but you just really need to focus on what's important and for us that's that's the, the two hours you play on a Saturday night or, or on the weekend and make sure you get the result you need. He's got bigger too, I can't believe it. <laughs> He has, yeah. He's been doing a lot of upper body weight, so yeah, he's, um, Mark, he's, I don't know if he needs to be bigger. Yeah, he is. <laughs> His head of marketing, Heath O'Loughlin, is probably sitting at home at the moment saying, Jack, mention Friday. Oh, Friday, Jack. Yeah, How th big? Thanks for the lead, Tony. I was going <laughs> to um, jump in and say that. But Good Friday footy um, is a huge occasion on the footy calendar. Um, it's probably the one game of the year that um, football actually takes a back seat. Um, it's a huge occasion for the, for the Good Friday appeal and yep. um, North Melbourne supporters, we urge everyone who's in town um, to come to the ground and, and get involved and, and obviously been part with Essen and Lloydie and mm. I'm sure they'll turn up in numbers as well because it is a bigger occasion than football and, and we visited the, the Royal Children's Hospital last week and to see so many sick kids in there um, that don't deserve to be in hospital, they don't know any different, um, mm. it's really, really sad to see but for us, we can do our part in the, in the footy world and, and for that, it's just turning up to the game and, and showing your support. So if, you, if you're around, get down. It's going to be a great occasion and, and hopefully we can put on a good show. What well, time? 4.20, I think. 4.40 or 4.20? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good 4.20, I think. Good good on you. 4.20, yeah. It's yeah. Twilight Friday, so it's a perfect time. Yeah. All the yeah. kids can get down so there. even if you're not a North Melbourne or an Essendon supporter, get on down there mm. and uh, have a look. And as Jack says, uh, it's not just a game of footy. It's also a great fundraiser for an iconic institution in this town. Jack, thanks very much for coming in. We'll see you on Good Friday out on the field. We'll take a break right here on the Sunday Footy Show.